The bull market and the treasury bonds has just begun, says this guy on an advisor perspective. So we'll read the article, but frankly, that's not what we're the gist of why I wanted to do this video early this morning without even taking a shower, without even cleaning my face. So let's dive into it because this uh, <laughs> much blood or ink has been spilled on the recession and all the things you can do. It's just a silly. But anyway. All right, so here's U.S. Treasury yields a uh, seven-year span. He talks uh, this from advisor perspectives from a guy named Eric Hickman. Uh, U.S. Treasury U.S. Treasury bull market has barely started. He talks a lot of stuff about various things, and uh, he is with who is this guy with? Um, I frankly just don't care, but uh, I'll show you why I'm reading this to you. He's a uh, president of Kessler Investment Advisory, an advisory firm in Denver, specializing in uh, U.S. Treasury bonds. All right. The point about this, I want to share with you something. Uh, the whole thing is recession talk and blah, blah, blah. And I just, it doesn't matter. You you don't know, our, just for the record, you don't know if we are in a recession now. You never know if you are in a recession. You only know in hindsight because the recession is two consecutive quarters of negative growth. That's all there is to it. So we don't know if we are in one now or not. We have no idea. So you can't say, are we going into recession when, in theory, we could be in one now. We have no clue. And so any defensive action you take to protect yourself from recession, well, theoretically, it could be hindsight because we could be in one. Let's see, today's the middle of August. So essentially, we're talking uh, a month and a half into the third quarter. So we could easily be a month and a half in a recession. We have no idea. So stop, stop. But... I want to point some out here because this was interesting here, and uh, this has been the case for a long time. Developed economy two-year sovereign bond yields. All right, so watch this. Developed economy two-year sovereign sovereign bond yields, and why this matters. First thing that jumps out at me is Turkey. Turkey's got fifteen point five nine percent yield. What does that tell you? Well, that tells you that Turkey. No one wants to invest in Turkey bonds, and uh, Erdogan. You know, he's a big uh, Putin wannabe. Uh, you know, he's a fascist without question. Uh, and it looks like a lot of the Turkey, I think he just lost in Istanbul. Uh, the uh, opposition party won the governing uh, governance in Istanbul about, what, six months or something like that. So there'll be some uh, chaos, more chaos in Turkey. And he did the Hugo Chavez where he staged a coup. And I mean, this is all these uh, tyrannical wannabes do this. They stage a coup now like Hugo Chavez did so that way they can... And what, 2003, I think Chavez did, so that way they can come back with authority and ban the people they wanted to ban. It's, I mean, it's great if you can get away with it. You can say, oh, they try to take over the country. And I'm going to get rid of them. And, and this is what Turkey's doing. Venezuela, part one, two, and three. And you, look for more of this to come with these uh, benevolent dictators uh, staging coups so that way they can come back to power and take out the people that they wanted to take out, but they couldn't do so unless they were under the threat of assassination. I mean, so you can see this by the way. All right, but look, Turkey is 15.59. What's number two? I mean, we're not talking, we don't know, we have nothing for Greece. Greece is still a basket case and forever will be. Uh, U.S. is number two, 1.53. All these ones in the red, from Japan to Ireland, here's Germany, negative 90 basis points. Negative, Switzerland, Sweden. All right, so these are, what's uh, Finland? Uh, where's, do we get Norway on here? Norway is 1.13. Uh, Japan is still negative 0.28%. So Japan is our test run for, we have too high debt, interest rates have got to go up. And yet look at Japan right there. All right, so the issue is here, a couple things jump out at me here. The idea that the U.S. government is uh, is going, the dollar will lose value. Uh, the only way the dollar is going to lose value is by massive, massive inflating, and uh, and it's not happening. I mean, look, they've massively inflated, but not to the extent that uh, the Weimar Republic did or anything like that. So we have 1.53 as our two-year Treasury bond, and that's as of 819. In fact, that's interesting because a 10-year Treasury is let's see here the 10 year was at 1.5 uh, 1.6 all right so what the issue is here is all right so if you are looking as an investor you can say i'm going to invest in japan bonds at negative interest rates or i'm going to invest in u.s bonds at, at wow whatever is that eight times well you're going to invest in u.s bonds and this economy is stronger uh and you're getting a, an actual positive return for your money 
Or you could say, I'm going to look at uh, Angela Merkel and, you know, I trust that she knows what the heck she's doing because she's the anti-Trump and the representative of the EU. Or you can look at Macron in France and see that you're not making any money there. So you say, I'm going to have to bite the bullet and invest in Trumpster because I can't stand Trumpster, but where else am I going to make money? And you're not going to invest in the U.S. if you think the dollar is going to fall. All right, so it's not going to happen, as we can see here right there. The idea that the dollar is about to collapse, it's just, man, it's silly. <sighs> or you could say, I like Justin Trudeau, so I'll invest in Canada. No, nah, I think I'll invest in the U.S. All right, see how that works? You're not going to take it on the chin to lose money. You're just not. You're going to say, I'm going to invest in the U.S. because it's the strongest economy, the largest economy. It's the safest economy, and it happens to pay the most interest. And this is why we can keep issuing debt and debt and debt and debt. Because people want to invest in us. Now, I mean, where else are you going to go? I mean, that's just, where else are you going to go? There is the alternative. The Tina investing uh, scenario. There is no alternative. Tina is the U.S. or bust. You're not going to go to Turkey. You're not going to go to Germany. You're going to go to the U.S. All right. This hasn't changed in years. I'm just, I'm just telling you. This hasn't changed in years. It just hasn't. Um, it's, it, I mean, so... You, I mean, it's been like this since Obama, and people say, well, you know, the people on the right, under Obama, oh my goodness, and yeah, here we are, under Trump, oh my goodness, and this is where, you know, the red pill does come to, look, I get people all the time that they hear what they want to hear in the politics, they say, ah, oh, you're bashing Obama, or, you know, I did one white where conservatives get wrong, oh, you're bashing conservatives, and I bash the left more than I bash the right, I get that, but, I mean, this, this has been like this for a long time. The U.S. has positive rates. Everybody else has negative rates. The U.S. is still the strongest economy by far. No one else holds a candle to us. Certainly not Germany. Certainly not Japan. China doesn't. We are the only game in town. Now, we need less regulation, so that's why the Trumpster is doing that. that. That was the problem with Obama. More and more regulation. Trumpster gets rid of some of that. But at the end of the day, it's still the same economy. It's a gigantic machine that is just churning out profits year over year over year. All right. Part two of this. Whenever you see uh, a person say, I can give you 3 to 5% yields, 5 to 6% yields, 8% yields, and I see this even, I think, is there an ad on, oh, this is not my website. Hold on, I want to see if I have an ad on my website. I'm gonna, hold on just a sec. Oops. All right, so I was looking at to see if there's any ads on my website where they're saying like a 9% yield or something like that. And actually, I'm, that's, I guess I have a pop-up blocker, but um, you got you got to understand if there are, Anyone arguing for in favor of five, six, seven, eight percent interest rates, you have to say, where is that coming from? And I don't even care if you're an insurance company. I mean, insurance companies have a different way they can do it because they're taking your premiums, they're investing it. And hopefully, they're not investing it with leverage. But at the end of the day, uh, that's what's happening: is that there's no way they can. There's just no way, no way they can generate those kind of yields without taking on significant risk. And I mean, significant risk could just be the S and P five hundred. But you're not getting 6% on a safe product. It's just not happening. I'm sorry. It's not happening. Um, I wish it could, but it's not. So if you see anyone saying we're giving you three or four or five, you know, above that rates for something that's safe, you got to ask how. how. I mean, where is that coming from? Because there are no government bonds out there. They're paying anywhere near that. It's just not there. So they could be leveraging. In fact, the interesting thing is this guy... Um, uh, Kessler Investment Advisors, they talk about leverage. So... <laughs> Uh, Bill Gross over at the uh, PIMCO Total Return Fund, if you actually look at his portfolio, there's significant leverage in there. He's no longer with PIMCO. I think he's with Janice now. But anyway, the leverage is just more risk, man. There's no other way around that. So if it's too good to be true, it is. It literally is. It means you're taking on more risk. So in the back of your mind, when you're looking at investments, you say, okay, if the U.S. is paying 1.53, why are these guys paying 5 and 6? How could it be possibly be safe if they're paying 5 and 6? All right, we'll see you guys. Don't forget to subscribe down here. Um, you just got to you, you got to understand the risk. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell to be notified. And we'll see you next time.